Intel just released their brand new Arc B580 graphics card, and not only does it make the competition look kinda silly, but it might actually have a lot of overclocking potential as well. Let's talk about it. Before that, if you just built or bought a new PC and you don't want to spend $200 on a Windows 11 Pro license, well thankfully VIP CDK Deals has just what you need, offering excellent prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 or 11 Pro OEM key for a great deal. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off, bringing the total to just $23 for Windows 11 and $17 for Windows 10, and you can even find great deals on products such as Office 2019. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate your new copy of Windows, just search Activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you wanna learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so in my hands right now, I have the brand new Intel Arc B580 Battle Mage GPU. This thing is definitely very, very impressive, and we'll be taking a look at some of the performance numbers in just a second, but if you've been interested in Battle Mage, well, not only have you probably seen me covering this GPU, but you've also probably seen some reviews as well. So instead of just reviewing the Intel Arc B580 today, well, I'm not only gonna be comparing it to some cards such as the A770, the R RTX 4060, 3060, and 2060 Super, but we're also gonna be taking a look at the overclocking potential of this B580 because, well, actually, it might be pretty good. But before we go ahead and jump into the benchmarks, I real quickly wanna set a baseline of, you know, just how good is the Intel Arc B580? How much have they improved since the A770 in terms of the architecture? Well, when we compare the two, we can see here in 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme in terms of the overall score, well, the B580 is actually scoring around 14% higher. And the funny thing is, this is despite the fact that the A770 has 60% more cores versus the B580. Now, to be fair, the B580 does clock around 11% higher. So that is a bit of an unfair advantage. But if we were to say clock them at the same speeds, well, in theory, the B580 should be a little bit faster. But even if we were to assume that the B580 gave you the same scores as the A770 when run at the same clock speeds, well, then that would actually indicate that we could be looking at at least a 60% increase in the IPC if you're to look at it that way. And that's absolutely insane for Intel to have achieved anywhere near 60% improvements in terms of the per core performance on a GPU generation is something that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. Now they were pretty far behind on the Intel Arc Alchemist GPUs. So yeah, that definitely does bring them a bit more in line, but if they can do this multiple times in a row, not only will they actually catch up to Nvidia and AMD, but they might actually start to surpass them in terms of the per core performance or maybe per performance per die area. Now, we'll have to wait and see whether or not that actually happens as we get closer to Celestial and Druid, which by the way, the next generation of cards after Battle Mage Celestial is apparently already complete. So who knows, we might even see it as soon as next year. And by the way, the B580, I don't think is gonna be as powerful as Battle Mage gets. There's a lot of rumors suggesting that we should actually be seeing a B770 and B780. So you could actually get a GPU that's faster than something like a 4070 or maybe even 4070 Super in not too long. I'm thinking quarter one of 2025, but you'll just have to wait and see if that happens or not. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already, as I will be covering anything related to these new GPUs in the future. But now let's talk about the overclocking on this card, and then we'll jump into the benchmarks. Now, this card is rated for just under 2.7 gigahertz out of the box. However, I was able to actually not only unlock the power limit, allowing for up to 20% more power, but I was able to add a little bit more voltage as well, bump the memory clock speed from around 19 gig gigabits per second to 20 gigabits per second. And then finally I added around 100 megahertz to the clock and all in all I got up to around 3.2 gigahertz for the maximum clock speeds. Now it definitely fluctuates a lot and if you're power limited, it could fall far, far short of that. But in theory, we're talking up to 20% higher clock speeds out of the overclock versus the stock speeds. And if this does actually scale to 20% more performance, wow, that's gonna be a crazy, crazy card. And I do suspect that if you pick up a third party card, you should probably get better scaling. And who knows, maybe you can even achieve 3.3 gigahertz, maybe in excess of 20% faster, but even on the reference card, which has a more limited power envelope, thanks to the just one eight pin here, 
I still think you should, at least in theory, be able to achieve better scores in your games, but let's see if it's actually significant. So starting off with the first game here, we do have Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, and using the Ultra settings. And here you can see that the B580 is actually the fastest card I was able to measure, giving 63 frames per second on average and 50 frames per second for the 1% low. Now that's just 5% faster average frame rate than the 4060, but it is actually 11% better on those 1% lows. And a possible reason for that could be that the B580 here actually has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, whereas the RTX 4060 is gonna be just eight gigabytes of VRAM. And in fact, probably most of the cards at this price point are gonna be around eight gigabytes, so you're getting 50% more VRAM and it's coming in at a lower price point. I mean, the 4060 is around $300. This is 250, so more VRAM and a lower price. That seems like a great deal, at least in theory. But even when you compare to the RTX 3060, that does still have 12 gigabytes of VRAM, but this is significantly faster. We're talking around over 20% faster on the 1% lows. And that is just absolutely insane for a card that comes in at a far lower price point. I mean, the 3060 was 330 when it launched and it's still going for high prices because people want that 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And if we take a look at that 20% overclock, well, unfortunately, it's not as impressive as I was expecting. We're talking around 10% faster on the 1% lows, which is pretty good and around 11% faster on average. So that does certainly make it significantly faster than the 4060 at that point. I mean, if we're talking 55 frames per second over the 45 on the 4060, that's actually 22% faster for the 1% lows, and that definitely makes the B580 far, far better. And to be fair, the 4060 isn't really gonna overclock worth anything, at least in my experience, it's basically margin of error type stuff. So that does make the B580 with overclocking even better, but it's not the 20% improvement that I was expecting. But now let's take a look at another game. Maybe this is just an outlier. And the next one coming up here is Apex Legends 1440p native. And interestingly here, basically everything is the same. The B580 actually has the highest average frame rates and we're talking 156 for the stock and 162 for the overclock. But not only does the overclock not actually give a substantial improvement, but just in general, it seems like the B580 isn't really any better than the 4060, 3060, or even 2060. Super, And in fact, the 4060 is the most consistent card in this chart, making it probably the best option specifically for Apex Legends as of now. Although I wouldn't be surprised if the B580 does get better with time, much like the ARC A770 did with its drivers. But now let's move on to the next game, Fortnite 1440p TSR Medium using Epic settings. And here you can see that once again, the B580 does take the crown, this time being 11% faster on the 1% lows, but giving roughly the same average frame rate, suggests that possibly that 12 gigabytes of VRAM is once again coming in handy. And then the B580 OC is giving a little bit better performance, but it's really nothing to write home about. So interestingly, once again, it's just not giving the improvements that I was expecting. Now moving on to the next game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 1440p DLSS slash XCSS using the ultra settings. And here, the B580 is actually not the fastest card. It looks like it's just getting slightly edged out in terms of the stability by the RTX 2060 Super and the 3060. However, it is still faster than the 4060, but I would say that all these cards are fairly even in this game, but it does have 9% better, 1% lows than the 4060, once again, likely because of the higher amount of VRAM. And then let's wrap it up with Starfield 1440p native resolution using the ultra settings and the B580 is giving around 10% better 1% lows than something like the 4060. And interestingly, the 56 frames per second, well, if you compare that to the 47, on the 4060, that's actually nearly a 20% increase in the average frame rate. That's a pretty huge increase. And then if we take a look at the five game average, you can see here that on average, the B580 is just around 3% faster on the 1% lows when compared to the 4060 and roughly a similar amount on the average frame rate. Now, the overclocked B580 does step things up. We're talking about an additional roughly 7% performance there, which isn't as good as I was expecting, but that does bring it to over 10% better on the 1% lows when compared to the RTX 4060. So the B580 is definitely the best graphics card that I've tested here, but interestingly, even though it can, in theory, clock up to 20% higher, there's just something holding it back. I'm not sure if it could improve via the drivers in AIB model or maybe 
maybe it just simply isn't going to scale past three gigahertz very well, but that's just what we're seeing here. But if we take a look at the price to performance, here's where things get a little bit more interesting. Yeah, sure, today maybe the B580 is only a little bit faster than the 4060 in these five games I tested at 1440p, but with that 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I do suspect that gap will grow very, very significantly in the near future to the point where probably the B580 will eventually be closer to 15 or 20% faster on average. But even at the current performance numbers, well, the B580 is giving you 20% better price to performance than the RTX 4060. And to recap, you're getting 50% more VRAM, a $50 lower price point, 20% better price to performance, and you do get DisplayPort 2.1. So it's pretty clear to me that the Intel Arc B580 is far and away the better graphics card, whether you want to overclock it or not. Overclocking does actually widen the gap as the RTX 4060 isn't going to overclock as well as the B580, but even if you throw that out the window, this is just a far superior card. Better features, more VRAM, better price, everything about it is just better. And I had no significant issues on the B580 this time around, and that's not something that I could have said about the Intel Arc Alchemist cards with their first generation of GPUs. So they've certainly learned a lot, and I do feel a lot more confident actually recommending this one versus their first series of cards. And their software on the control panel is also a lot better as well, giving you more control over how your image looks and what the monitors do, etc. So this is a really, really good second showing from Intel. I've also been seeing stuff suggesting that not only are their next cards pretty much almost ready to start kind of finally producing, but also that they're moving on to the next generation after that as well. So it seems like Intel Arc is here to stay. We should be getting Celestial and Druid at the very least, and hopefully a lot more after that. And if they continue to give us 50, 60% IPC improvements every generation, well, Nvidia and AMD should be very, very worried. And if you're interested in picking one up, well, right now they're completely out of stock, but I will have affiliate links to every single one I can find in the description and pinned comment below for your convenience. You might wanna give them a check to see if they're back in stock. I do believe Intel will be restocking these quite a lot, but there's gonna be a lot of demand. This is the best graphics card that we've seen in many, many years, in my opinion, at the $250 price point. It's absolutely destroying everything, and I highly, highly recommend it. But yeah, that's just what I think. Do you think that the B580 is really that good? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.